Do you believe that Vice President Mike Pence and the majority of the Trump cabinet are going to vote to temporarily remove the president from office? Do you believe if the House got it together to lightning fast impeach Donald Trump that Republicans in the Senate would see the light and say, you know what, this time we will vote to convict and remove? You think so? As best as I can tell, President Trump thinks yesterday was a win. His supporters pulled off a violent armed insurrection attacking the U.S. Capitol, and then they all just walked away to go tell their war stories about it and brag about it. The president offended some of the more norms-respecting members of his party, maybe, but he loves that. He's not out there to win everybody to his side. He's out to destroy the norms of democratic governance so they don't exist anymore, so he can run the country without them. The more he and his movement make enemies out of those who still respect democratic norms, the cleaner the fight is for him. After the rioting and the attack on the Capitol yesterday, eight Republican senators last night, eight still voted to defy the results of the presidential election and continue nursing and stoking this fantasy grievance that Joe Biden didn't really win and somehow Trump must still be declared the winner. Eight Republican senators and a huge majority of the Republicans in the House. Republicans in the House voted for the conspiracy theory and the grievance by a nearly two to one margin, including the number one and number two House Republicans, Kevin McCarthy and Representative Scalise. Yesterday was a win for the violent insurrectionism that is now the apex of the Republican Party. I mean, the biggest disappointment for the president's supporters appears to be um, fear of missing out. Regret that they weren't there if they weren't there. Regret that they didn't go farther if they were. Regret that they didn't do similar damage in other parts of the country. There was a bomb threat phoned into the Michigan State House. The Republican governor of Utah had his staff evacuated from the State House there. Secretary of State in Georgia and his staff had to be evacuated from the Georgia State Capitol. They rolled out a guillotine amid an armed protest at the State Capitol in Arizona, in Phoenix. In Kansas, they stormed the rotunda, too, at their State Capitol and said they'd be back and armed this weekend. The Washington governor's residence had its gates broken down and the grounds stormed by armed men. State police were on the scene there. They chose not to arrest any of those people, even if after they broke down the gates, because they didn't want to upset anybody. The pipe bombs found outside the headquarters of the RNC and the DNC in Washington were both reportedly real bombs. They were not hoax devices. They were operable pipe bombs capable of causing, quote, great harm according to the Capitol Police Bomb Squad. One of the lawyers who filed pro-Trump lawsuits after the election in the state of Georgia is now calling for Vice President Mike Pence to be the first one before the firing squad. If the point of authoritarian seizure is to get rid of democratic norms and restrictions so that the country isn't governed by them anymore, so that leaders aren't restrained by them anymore, to clear the way for the claiming and indefinite holding of power, surely by force. What about yesterday didn't prove to be a successful dry run for them? Tell me about the consequences for them that they're now shaking their heads over, ruining their decisions, wishing they hadn't done it, recognizing they've finally gone too far. What wasn't a success for them with what happened yesterday? I mean, the Republican Party by a large margin, is absolutely still on board. I mean, Senator Josh Hawley and Senator Ted Cruz, who led this thing in the Senate, they're real contenders now, right? The way they kept carrying the torch to promote the big lie about the election, even amid the dead bodies at the Capitol. But sure, you know, some police leaders will get fired. So there's that. The New York Times reported overnight that White House aides believe that the president appeared to be enjoying the footage of the attack yesterday while it was underway. He liked it. It was a good day for him. Yesterday was a big success.